Hi guys. So here I'll be going through with you some examples of alkene reactions with the various reagents. And here specifically, I'll be using cyclopentene for this summary. There is a reason why I'm going to use cyclopentene because some of these reactions, they are what we call stereospecific and mutual specific. You'll see later on. Now, how do you read this table? We begin with cyclopentene and we rank this separately with the set of reagents. I will draw the products to you and I will note some things that you got to take note of. So first up, if I react a hydrogen halide, HX I can call it, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen chloride, HI, what you get is the double bond opens up and the H goes to the one of the carbon, the X, the halogen goes to the other carbon. So your product is just a cyclopentyl halide and alkyl halide. The note here will be it follows the Mark Kornikov rule. Now, the next case, when I react a cyclopentene with dilute sulfuric acid and warm, basically you are going to have an alcohol. So, a cyclopentanol. Again, this follows the Mark Konnikov rule. The third case, when you react bromine dissolved in CCl4, this is a nonpolar solvent. So, in this case, the double bond opens up and the BRBR will join. But you have to be careful in your drawing because the bromine must join in the opposite direction. So, we call it a, a trans addition, an anti addition. So the BR will be on the opposite side. That means one of the bonds here must be wedged, the other one must be hash lines. BR, BR. And if you think about it carefully, there could be another isomer. These are enantiomers. All right. Now, here I'm drawing 2D, but in a 3D mode, what is it that you have to pay attention to? So suppose you are facing a cyclopentane ring. Okay, so the BR will join up and down for the incoming groups. So that's why they are trans to each other, anti-addition. So this molecule here would be represented by this molecule. I'm seeing from the front. What about that molecule then? It will be as such. Br going down, the other carbon points up. Okay? Next, we have ozonolysis. Ozone, found the ozone layer. Step one and then step two, we add zinc and uh, acetic acid, or you can add dimethyl sulfide. In here, you have a carbon carbon double bond cleavage. Remember, I taught you before, you just cut the CC bond, you pull apart, and you insert oxygen inside. So what you get is just like this. Double bond. The other side. Double bond. So what do you recognize this as? It's an aldehyde because it ends off with a C, double bond O, and the H. Alright? The H. Good. Next, osmium tetroxide, step one and step two, sodium hydrogen sulfide, followed by water. Now, this is a set of reagents, so you have to have step one, OSO4, then step two, this set of reducing agent. What will you have? This is what you form a, a cis diol. Okay, a cis diol, meaning both hydroxy group will be on the same side. So, when I draw it out for you, we have to note that both OH will point down, which means in your drawing 2D, you could draw for us this. With both bonds to the hydroxy group to the same direction. Okay? For the next case, this is oxymercuration. You will form you will form an alcohol. So, 
alcohol. And in this case, you just have the alcohol. Right. The note for this will be, it follows the Mark Konnikov as well. Markov, Nikov rule. Right. And the last case, MBS stands for N bromosacinamide. In the presence of a ultraviolet ray, you will get a alal bromide. The alal group will be the carbon next to the CC double bond. So in this case, it's rather special. You do not break the CC double bond. So, hmm, this color is better. Okay, cyclopentene. This is your vinyl group, so that part will be your alal, alal carbon. You just put down here a Br. Now you notice that at this position, we have a chiral center. So that means for this part, we could have this bond to be a wedge or the hash lines. Both will be formed. 